Greetings Comic Book fans and welcome to Dudes Comic Hall for the third week of July 2015. I'm Jason and this is my weekly video where I share with you the new comics I've picked this up this week. Um, I'm here this week a day late and a dollar short. Um, the plan was that I was going to upload my comic review video on Tuesday and then this video would have been uploaded Wednesday. But um, somehow I deleted the pictures of the comic covers that I use at the beginning of my review video so I had to go and get make a new beginning for it and I you know when you're sitting there and like you think well what are my favorite covers and my mind just went blank and it took me the whole evening to find like the different new covers to put on that video so by the time I'd found them it was far too late to upload it so in the end I decided I'd I'd upload it on the Wednesday so that's why this video is thus a, a day a day late anywho so some of these books I've actually read now but I won't review them here we'll wait for the review video because I'll get all confused otherwise so let's get into this uh, first up we have Justice League issue number 42 um, I've really been loving this I've read this it was good nice action packed as the last couple of issues but still good um, I really I'm really enjoying this that Jason Fabach has really stepped up. Jeff Johns is writing is just brilliant. He actually writes them like they're a team, like they actually know and like each other now. Um, really good stuff and the story, yeah, really enjoying this. We then have Years of Future Past, issue number three. Um, so yeah, all I gotta say about this is Dragons vs Sentinels that had me signed up. Um, and though it is just a dragon versus Doom Sentinels it's still really good I, I don't know why but I just really enjoying this book I found this book a lot a lot of fun um, issue 3 and yeah I read the first two last week and I'm still loving it we then have book of death issue number one this is Valiant's new event I love when they do their events look you've got hard cardboard kite cover in the back you've got like these sketches in the back um, which is really great stuff and it's the regular price 3 dollars but they make it really feel special so um, Valiant do, do make the extra effort when they have their events um, as for the story I was a bit disappointed but we'll talk about that in my review video at last we have the final issue of Hawkeye issue number 22 uh, the finale and it was worth the wait you know it's, it's not very often that you wait so long but I was instantly into the story I was caught up it, 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 it made sense to me what was happening. Um, yeah, was was really good. Sad in parts, but really good, and it resolves everything nicely. So um, I thought that that was good. Then we've got Harrow County issue number three. This is from last week. I've got issue one over here. Uh, I got that through eBay. I've got issue two on the way, uh, but my comic shop had issue three, so I picked this up. Um, it's kind of a horror book, similar in some ways to witches. Um, it's about this small town, and they kill this witch, and she swears she'll be back, whether to like t to, to look after them or to, to like kill them. She'll be back, and then we jump forward, and we have this young girl called Emmy. It was a bit of the Luke Skywalker's about her, in that like she lives on this farm with her dad, and she dreams of like seeing the outside world. She's 17, nearly old enough to kind of go out but her father's like oh no I need you you know I need you on the farm kind of like Uncle Owen with Luke Skywalker in A New Hope so there's that kind of familiar aspect to it and then there's this tree that haunts her dreams and this language that she can't quite understand but it sounds like somebody not trying to tell her something um, so yeah it's really good I enjoyed the first issue I'm probably not doing it justice but it's really good it's written by Colin Bunn with art by Tyler Crook and each issue has, um, near the end, has Tales of Harrow County. It's like a one-page thing with different artists. And it kind of, whatever been going on in the book, that one page at the back tends to give you a little bit that kind of makes what's happening in the book make more sense, if you will. So, yeah, I'm, I enjoyed the first issue, so I'm looking forward to getting to the next two. We then have uh, Martian Manhunter, issue number two. Um, I liked the first one. It surprised me. It was kind of like a sci-fi horror which I didn't expect from Martian Manhunter. Um, everything we know about Martian Manhunter seems to have been a lie, and he's not the last of the Martians. He's just the precursor to an invasion. Um, so yeah, I, I liked the first issue. I didn't totally understand everything that was going on, but it intrigued me enough to bring me back. 
We then got Dead Drop, issue number three. Didn't like the last issue, didn't enjoy it at all, but I did enjoy the first issue, so hopefully this will return to form. We then have Silver Surfer, issue number 13. The last days of the Silver Surfer kick off here. Looks like we're going to have a bit of doom in this issue. Um, I'm hoping this book's going to continue, but I don't. I haven't heard nothing, so it looks like these could really be the last days of the Silver Surfer, which is sad because I've really grown to like this character. We've then got Where Monsters Dwell, issue number three, which has been really good. And one of the things I've really liked about Secret Wars is it's allowed Marvel to try out other genres because, like, where is like other companies like Image and that? They don't just do superheroes, they do other stuff. And Marvel kind of their big money maker is superheroes. So it's nice to see them get the opportunity to do books like this, like Weird World, like Master of Kung Fu, like 1874, that are trying out different genres and giving us a bit something different. So yeah, I applaud that. So far, you know, I don't know long term if there's a future in these type of books for Marvel, but certainly as a mini series, I think, yeah, I think they could work. We then have Planet Hulk, issue number three. Um, this book I've been enjoying, it's an all action kind of book, it's like an action movie, put your brain, disengage your brain and just enjoy the ride. Um, that's the thing with these books, they're just like a lot of fun. But like the thing with this book is, it, um, some of these secret wars, they've used names of popular events like Planet Hulk. So you pick up this book originally thinking it's going to be those characters and it's totally nothing to do with that and you kind of, I know why Marvel do it because people are going to pick it up, more people are going to pick it up, then if they call this Hulk Island, not probably as many people are going to pick that up because that's a different title, that's going to be a different book, um, which is really what it is, it is Hulk Island, but Planet Hulk kind of people will get it, but I, I kind of think there's a flaw in their logic in that people will buy it expecting Planet Hulk, but they're going to be more disappointed by it, where if you call it Hulk Island, the people that buy it aren't going to be disappointed, they're going to enjoy the story, you know, so I don't know. Um, it swings around about, I suppose, but to me, I just think there's a flawed logic in calling it an event that people know and think that it's going to be that event when it's nothing to do with it. At least Years of Future Past, it does have the characters in from Days of Future Past, though it's a totally different story, it does at least have those characters in there. So, uh, same with Age of Apocalypse, those characters are actually in there. With this, it's totally something different, but... I have been enjoying it, so I'm looking forward to that one. We then got Robin, Son of Batman, issue number two. I um, really loved the first issue, it was a lot of fun. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what they do this issue. Um, we've got quite a few names on the front cover. Because I thought Gleason was doing the art and the the ink and the, the, and the writing. But there's like three names on that front cover. You can never find uh, the credits when you want them. Can you? Uh, oh, here we are. We have it. Scripts and pencils. Okay. So, Mick Gray is the inks. And there you got Gray. And then John Callis and Jeremy Cox are, the, are doing the colours. So, we've got two colourists on the book. Um, so, yeah. Mm. But one thing about DC, their 3 99 books do seem thicker than their 2 99 books. So, you do feel like you're getting extra. Maybe it's extra adverts, I don't know, but it does seem thicker than this. Black, got Black Canary next issue number two, which doesn't seem as thick as, as um, Robin. Uh, and this is a 2 99 book, so at least it does feel like you get extra pages with DC. Um, as for Black Canary, um, I enjoyed the first issue. Just looking forward to that. And then we have Superman Wonder Woman issue number 19, which I am super pumped for as we're going to have the Suicide Squad taking on uh, Superman and Wonder Woman, that's where it ended last issue, so you can see here, I've not read this yet, um, so you see you've got Superman and Wonder Woman taking on, there's a Harley Quinn, there's Deadshot, Black Mantis, Boomerang, and it looks like Reverse Flash, all there, so that should be an interesting battle, because Superman isn't fully powered up yet, so that should be good, but I've been enjoying this, this is a Peter Tomasi book with Doug Mackey on art, so that should be good. I've been enjoying the Superman books. I know not everybody's kind of enjoying those, but I've, I've really enjoyed getting back on them. I think having a general theme running through them, I, I think is good. Um, I do think this whole thing DC are doing, on the one hand I applaud it, having like just letting the story be told and not having worrying about continuity so much. But then at the same time, I, 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 like, I read Justice League and Jeff Johns kind of mentioned stuff from other books 
and it, I like that kind of thing. It makes it feel more of a connected universe, rather, rather than just characters that exist in the same universe, but the stories are kind of itself are different. You know, I, I like that feeling of a shared universe. It's kind of like back in the day with Marvel, you'd have like Spider-Man, and there'd be Flo four flying by in the background, and it made it feel like a shared universe that you, ha you these other characters would pop up or other things would be mentioned so that's cool anywho so those are my books i got 13 books this week one from last week so 12 new books this week um i will be back hopefully fingers crossed the weekend to review these bad boys um i hope you've all had a great new kind book day and you've got the books you want please comment below if there's any books i've missed out that you think have been really good uh, or anything you're looking forward to um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, all that leaves me to say is that I've been Jason. This has been Dude's Comic Hall. Bye for now.